Team Insanity. Normal uploading schedule every Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and Sundays. Get in your requests of the videos you guys want to see, and we will try to get to them. So, this is the camera that we use, the Replay XD 1080. I'll get to this in a second. Now, we did do an unboxing. I did an unboxing of this when I bought it a while back, so go ahead, go watch that if you're just looking for what it comes with out of the box, that kind of stuff. Now, I also show how to do a barrel mount. I'm going to do that at the very end of this show, so if you want to see how to barrel mount this without having to go buy the actual barrel mount and you know save $50, stay until the very end and I'll show you how to do that. Now, you get this cool little package thingy. Re re replay case that you get and it holds all your cords here's a cord that you plug in to the computer to transfer all your footage here's your HDMI cable this is very very important so as you're mounting your camera I went over this in the unboxing but I'll go over here so as you're mounting your camera you can plug this into your TV and watch the live feed so you know what it's gonna look like so you don't have to turn it on take a video and then transfer the footage to your computer and then look and say, oh, I don't like it right there. Let me mm, screw around with the mount. So that is, uh, that's what this is for. Very, very important. Do not lose this. And you can also live feed and watch your videos after you, uh, after you made them. You, get, you only actually get a 4 gigabyte memory card. We bought 16 gigabytes. It, it is compatible up to 32. Here's a 32 gigabyte. Here's what one of the um, adhesive mounts looks like. Okay, so basically you just take this and you stick that's adhesive right there. Just take this and pretend that this is not here. Just take this and okay, and it fits on right there. Give it about once you buy this, give it about 72 hours or so to set, and it'll sit a lot better on your mask and it won't get you know won't go flying off like Jacobs does. And you get a little silk carrying case, so this is nice and cute. So you have a nice little thing to put your replay in. Actually, you get the idea, you know. And get a little little thing to put on. Now this is this is good. Uh, you can put this on the back of your camera, so if you're walking around with it, you can have it around your wrist or whatever. Or if you're like Jacob and your camera gets shot off all the time, you can actually connect this to the back of your mask. So if your camera gets shot off, boom. It's just dangling there then, and then you don't have to search 30 minutes in the woods finding it looking dumb. And then, this is a very important piece that I'm glad that they put in, a car charger. So, you're at the field, you forgot to charge your camera, or you're at a big game scenario or something like that, you're just recording an ass ton of footage. Here is a nice car charger This can save your life. That is basically all you get. Now, I'm going to, before I go into everything, first off, replay, you have the best customer service out there. My replay actually is not here. This is Nick's. It, I had to send it in because it would not turn on. And I emailed up replay. I've had it for a year. It's not under warranty. They, didn't, they actually didn't even um, ask if it was under warranty. They, did, they didn't care, to be quite honest with you. And I just said, hey, my replay's not turning on. And they tried to do the master reset um, over the Internet. They tried to tell me. It didn't work, so they said, okay, here, send it to me. And they, print, they had to print off something. They said, send it to us. We'll just replace it free for free. So I'm getting a new free one. It's in the mail right, right meow. So it should be coming. Now, what I really, really like is in the back, in the back of this um, on the replay, is say you forget your settings. It's all right there in the very back of this little cap that you put on the back. Do not lose this. This is very, very important. This is what protects the back. Is if you get a little bit of water in there. Uh, say goodbye to your replay. So do not lose this. This is probably like the most important part to your replay. Memory card goes here. Click it. Slides out. It takes a little micro SD. Slide it back in. I'm gonna show you what it looks like when it comes on. If it's charged, there we go. So you can also take pictures with it. So this is what it looks like when it's on. Now we always use. Um, what do we use? 720 at 60 frames per second. That's what we always use. Nick's has, Nick has it at, right now, he has it at 960 at 30 frames per second. We all use different modes. I use mine at 720, 60 frames per second. Now, the one thing that I really do not like about these cameras, it's a little bit awkward at first to learn when you first start out and go play. It's very, very weird because I wish that they could somehow, like, 
design this differently where it's just one button operation because to get it to record you have to turn it on you have to hold it down it'll vibrate three times after it's done vibrating then you go to the back and you press it it'll vibrate another three times and boom now you're recording so this is recording right now so yeah that's that's kind of I think that's a flaw I think that's very very stupid the other cameras that we've owned in the past, all you have to do is just press a button, boom, it comes on, press a button, boom, it comes off. How you turn it off, how to stop recording, hold down the back button for like five seconds. You'll hear it vibrate once, then you hold down the front one, vibrates once, and it's, and it's off now. I really think that's a very stupid design, to be honest, especially when you first get it out of the box. You're going to be like pressing it like I was, and it's just like vibrating on your mask, and you're like, the fuck is this thing doing? And you're like pressing all these buttons, and it's just vibrating the crap out of your mask, and you're like, what's going on? So, yeah, that's it's very, very annoying. Now, these things are probably the most durable camera that I have seen outside of any other case. So this thing is a very heavy grade aluminum. It is very, very, very strong. This th we've had our cameras for almost a, all year now. And these things have been taking a complete beating, especially Jacob's. Jacob has gotten shot off. Like God knows how many times his has gotten shot off. So like I said, these have taken a com very, very big beating. And they're still working. They're still surviving other than mine. And, it, and if it does break somehow, if you do break it, Send it to them. They'll send you a new one for free. How awesome is that? Now, they say that this is not waterproof. Um, I sort of begged to... I mean, it's not 100% waterproof, but we've played out in some pretty heavy rain, okay? Now, if you are going to be playing out in the rain and you're worried about, oh my gosh, my camera's not waterproof, okay, number one, don't drop it in a puddle. Number two, okay, this back, the bacteria play, if you do buy one, is I would suggest... You tighten the crap out of this, okay? Because just like, and if you guys have ever seen, like, um, say, if you have a waterproof watch and you change your own battery, when you open it up, there's O-rings and crap and, and seals that, that help seal it up. On the back of the replay, you guys won't be able to see this, but there's this, like, this little black seal around the threads, and then there's another little O-ring. So it really, really helps... It really, really, really helps trapping out the water. So if you just barely screw this in, so say like like that, and you just go to where it barely stops, it's not going to create the best seal. So if you're playing out in the rain, really just keep on screwing this in until you cannot screw it anymore. Don't like over tighten it. But see, I can keep on going. This thing goes forever. Then it's a pain in the ass to get off or to untighten. But whatever. I'd rather tighten it up all the way than have a broken camera. So now there. Now. It's tightened all the way. Now it's practically basically waterproof. Okay, it's not 100% waterproof as they say, but this thing is pretty damn waterproof. Mine did not have water damage. So, and we've, like I said, we've played out in the rain, that kind of stuff. So, that is about the replay. Now, the mounting system, I like the mounting system a lot more than, say, like the GoPro mounting system, but I think it could be better, like, <coughs> like the, the, the old camera that we had the tacky on. Now, that was really, really cool, the strap mount, like it was like a little clip that we could clip on to anyone's mask. So it was super, super easy to say, hey, Travis, here, go take the camera, and we clip it on their mask, and they can go out and play and get us footage, and then we can take it off of him and say, hey, Chris, here, go take it, go play, and they can go get us footage, okay? With this, you have to have the adhesive mount on there already, and that's if you barrel cam it, you just keep on giving your barrel camera out, or your barrel out then you know that'll work that way but you know that's kind of a pain in the ass because you can't really can't really share this with everyone unless if they have the adhesive mounts already on their mask me nick and jacob we all have the adhesive mounts already on our mask so it's pretty easy for us to swap cameras that kind of stuff but you know like i said if you're looking to get footage from other people then you know it's not it's not the most amazing thing in the world like i said there's this mounting system, though, it's not going anywhere. Your replay is going to be on there. It's a perfect mounting system. It's not It's not like GoPro. The thing that I don't like about GoPro is that if it sits on your head, then it's just like you're like a, like a fucking deer with antlers out there just in the middle of your head. It's like a massive target. Or if you put it on your, if you put it on your barrel or your hopper, it's just like, okay, and it's, again, another big target. Now I know I'm talking about the GoPro. I know people are going to say, hey, what do you like? What do you think is better, the replay or the GoPro? 
Now, what I have to say is if you're doing water sports, say you live on a lake or you do other things other than water sports, then go and get get the um get the GoPro because you can go and go scuba diving and whatever else you want to do on the water. Go surfing, that kind of stuff. Because they say this is not 100% waterproof. By the way, there is also a strap mount for this, but it's more made for snowboarding. It's not as easy as the tag cam one. But anyway, so it's, if like I said, if you want to do a lot of more water-oriented stuff and you don't necessarily want to do a lot of paintball stuff or you don't want to have like a paintball channel, that kind of thing, maybe you just want to put a GoPro on there and just get, you know, maybe you're not just the biggest paintball player in the world, maybe you just play once or twice a month and you want to show your friends and your family what you do, then go ahead and get the Pro, GoPro, especially if you like live on a lake and you're doing a lot of other water stuff. But other than that, if you're only looking to play paintball, I would pick this up over the GoPro any day. The reason why this thing is like, this thing is so, so small compared to the GoPro. It is super, 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 super small, okay? It's like if you put a paintball up there, it's like the size, the paintball is like the size of this lens, like right here. Okay, so really, it is very small. It's a very, it's not a big target at all, okay? And I'll show you what it looks like on a barrel. It's like the size around, it's like the size of a paintball barrel, to be honest with you. It is not that big. So, unlike say a GoPro or other cameras, you're not going to have this massive target on your head that says, that has like hit me right all over it, okay? You're not going to have that out there. But, you know, and if you're going out and maybe you're racing cars or whatever else you do, you can you can do that. You can set this up on your dashboard. Whatever else you want to do, you can do that. But, you know, other than that, this thing can do everything but water sports. They do make a, they do make a waterproof, um, casing thing for it. If that is extra, whatever. I'm not going to get into that because we don't have that. They do make one. So maybe if you, you know, if you want the very, very small size for paintball and you want to just film paintball stuff, but on the side you want to film a little bit of water stuff, that is extra if you want to get it. I forgot how much it is. Now the biggest thing that I really do not like about this camera is the battery life. If you're playing, say, at like at speedball or something. You can go and play two days worth of speedball if you have a big enough memory card. You can go play two days worth of speedball on this, no problem, because speedball's games last like, what, maybe five minutes at the most, and that's like complete most. Normally our speedball games last like two minutes. Okay, so if you're playing speedball, perfect. Now if you're playing woodsball, or if say you go to Living Legends or a huge scenario, when you're out there at like hours at a time, okay, this battery life only has one hour. Okay, so it has about, yeah, it has about one hour, and it, you know, it's, it doesn't last as long as, say, the GoPro, that kind of stuff. It's not, you know, if you're going out and playing very long scenarios, you're going to have to charge it every now and then. That's, that's the biggest thing that I do not like about this. I wish the battery life could be bigger. Now, you can buy extra batteries for this thing. You can, I don't know how they work entirely. I'm pretty, you just plug it into the back where you charge it, and you can run the, run the battery thing like to a pot or something, whatever you do. We haven't used that. But that is really the only bad thing that I have to say about this. I wish the the battery life was a little bit longer. It does have a little bit of more weight to it than than um I kind of like because when I'm running, if I'm really, really running, my mask is on loose, then I can feel it moving around. I can feel that my mask is leaning a little bit more towards this way, of course, because there's more weight on it. But it's no feather, but it's no rock. So... That's, you know, that's about the weight. And the other cool thing is if you look on the lens as you're mounting it, those two little, those two little stripes and those little dashes show you where it's zeroed in at, where it's looking. That's pretty cool. So, really, I, I really only have all positives to say about the Replay XD 1080. It's an amazing camera. And the 720 is a lot cheaper. It's like half the price. It's 150 These These run about three 300 I always use the 720 60 frames per second, so if you're wondering how that footage looks, go, go look at some of my videos. You can see what the 720 60 frames per second looks like. Go click the 720 HD, not the 1080, the 720, and you can see what it's capable of doing. It's awesome. You can also play around with like your contrast and all the, there's a lot of settings that you can go into doing. I'm not going to bore you with that stuff because you know you can figure that out on your own if you really get into it you can do your research on that um, message me if you have if you own a replay and you want to play around with the settings but really I only have I'll, only positives to say about this replay other than 
the battery life I wish could be a little bit longer. But other than that, I mean, we all love them. We don't really have any complaints other than Jacob's mount always comes flying off. But that's more so because, you know, he has just an old mount on there. So, really, I, we have no complaints. We have zero, like, massive big complaints. You know, they have great customer service. They get back to you fast. They take care of you. It's just an awesome camera, especially for paintball. This has got us a long way. I love it for paintball. Now, that is the review. I love it. 9 out of 10, I would say, buy it if you're looking to play paintball. Now what I'm going to do is, if you want to see how it makes the barrel, the barrel mount very, very cheaply and easily, keep on watching, but if you don't really care, see ya. Alright, so, what you're going to need, what I find especially good, is if you guys watch any of the videos, if you see me with my reflex rail, I have the graphite, but on my barrel back I have this black electrical tape on, or not electrical tape, hockey tape, that's what I'm going to say now is when you're doing this, get hockey tape, okay, especially hockey tape. Don't use electrical tape. The reason why is if you guys have ever used electrical tape and you've taken it off of something, it leaves a very nice, amazing, sticky residue on there. Me, I don't want a sticky residue on my barrel and or replay XD. So, I tend to say that hockey tapes work um, amazing for barrel mounts because when I go and take the tape off, it does not, you know, leave a huge sticky residue or any other tape for that matter. Now, what you're going to need, hockey tape, your barrel, replay, and a freakishly large knife. Not really. But, so, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tape the barrel back. The reason why is that this is aluminum. So if you just try to place this on your barrel back, it's just going to scratch the shit out of your barrel back. And it's not going to, you know, if you, don't, if you don't care about your anodizing, whatever. But me, I like to tape the barrel back. Just the barrel back, no need to tape the barrel front. So I'm going to tape the barrel back ass so Just really just wrap it. That's like you don't need to get overly excited about taping it. You know, just doesn't have to be clean or anything. It doesn't have to be that amazing. Just put some tape on there. Like I said, it's just to save the anodizing. It doesn't have to be anything special. Tape the whole barrel back. Don't really need to tape the barrel front. Now you take your freakishly large knife and you want to really get that nice precision cut like you're dicing a tomato. And this thing, wow, this thing is dull. Oh my goodness. I guess I'm not dicing anything today. So I'm just going to rip it. Okay, so the freakishly large knife didn't work. It wasn't sharp enough, so I had to get three freakishly large knives. Okay. Let me... Ah, got it. Okay, so free freakishly large knives if you can't use one and if you're stupid at ripping tape like I am. So there, now you just taped your barrel back. That's all you have to do for that part. And now what you do, since you want your replay to go on perfectly straight on your gun, let me just fix that tape, there you go. So now you want it going perfectly straight on your gun. Now, you want to put your barrel back on your gun as so. Like as you would on a, like you're going and playing a game. Okay, I'm just going to cut this little excess tape off that I don't need. Alrighty. So now, I'm just going to size that up to where I need. It's backwards. Alright, so now I'm going to take it off camera and look down the barrel to make sure that you don't have any air connected to your gun. The reason why I'm doing this is I want to line up the tacks perfectly fine. Alright, so I have a decent idea. I'm just going to mark it. Alright, so now take off your barrel after you mark it in some way, shape, or form. Alright, get rid of your gun. Alright, so now... You're going to do the same exact thing that you did with the barrel back, except you're going to put a lot more tape on there, and you're going to tape down the replay to the barrel in the spot that you want it in. So now you're just going to take your tape. It's going to probably go off camera because it takes a two-handed two job. It's a little bit hard. Now let me just set this up. All right. This is the hard part, especially if you only have one person. Now one thing that you don't want to do is tape over the button. 
The reason why is that the button will stick down completely and you'll freeze your camera because if you hold all the buttons down at the same time, the replay, you know, tends to freak out a bit. And it's just like, oh my god, what's going on? Freeze. And now there you go. Just start taping it up. Use lots of tape so it doesn't move around. Like I said, don't use electrical tape. I mean, unless if you want to. It's going to be a little bit wobbly at first. You want to make sure that it's really, really tight. Tight is better um, in terms of everything. Insert joke here. Just make it really super tight. So it doesn't have to be pretty. It just has to work. So I'm just trying to get it on there nice and tight. Yeah, so. I'm just going to make sure that I'm looking down that it's not crooked. It is a teeny bit. That's right. I'll fix it. So now, the reason why you don't have to, but if you want to, I like to take, I like to buy two different types of tape. I like to buy this thick stuff right here that I'm using on the barrel and on the replay itself. And I like to use this, ooh, nice three knife. And I like to use this little stuff so I can also tape the back of the camera as so. So if you want to, if you want to spend the time sizing it, you can. And what I like to do is I like to start with the front because it's a little bit fatter. But I like, I'm not going to get into the whole thing, but I like to cut right at the very edge of this. So it does not cover the button, like I said, but it just gives that extra support in the front. So it won't wiggle, so it won't wiggle around when you're running and you're diving and you're shooting and all that good stuff. So like I said, just use hockey tape. That's all I really ever use. Just tape the back and then tape the front. You don't actually have to do this. I've done it without taping the back or the front like I am right now. It's not necessary. I mean, you, if you, I like to. But like I said, I've done it without taping the front. God damn it. I've done it without taping the front or the back before. It's This gets very, very annoying and very, very tedious, especially with only one person. I like to do it with two people. Giggity people is always better. Insert joke here. And yeah, basically that's all you do. So you just basically tape it down. Now if you really want extra support, I've done it before, what you can do is just put duct tape on it and it won't leave the sticky residue other than on the tape. So this is how to nick rig a camera onto your uh, barrel. Now, I'm not going to tape this off at the second, but as you can see how small the replay is, it's no larger than the barrel. If you guys can see that, hopefully you guys can see that. But, yeah, so it's really, it's very, very small. It's about the size of the barrel. Don't look down the barrel, guys. Oh, my gosh. So, yeah, it's basically how you make the barrel mount. I hope that helps. Like I said, it doesn't have to be pretty. All it has to do is work, get the job done. Hope that helps. I'm just going to cut this off with the, with the claw. I'm going to finish it up. I'm going to make it look pretty. I'm going to smoothen it out. There we go. So, yeah, that's all I got for you guys. Peace.